Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and we're gonna be here in Napoleon 2, or sorry, Napoleon Total War, and this is gonna be on Salamanca Province. I am gonna be playing as Austria, my opponent is gonna be Russia. So this is gonna be a cool map. I really like it because of the differentiation of terrain, and it's one of the few maps where there's like cities in the center, but it doesn't really seem OP. Sometimes in the maps, there's you know, cityscapes, but then lots of rivers and choke points. At least in this one, when there is a city, there's lots of ways to get around it. There is overlooking uh, positions on the flanks where you can get shots in. So yeah, I, I really like this map. Keeps it interesting. And in 3v3s, man, it's cool to see troops swarming over the town, the hills, uh, the forest. It makes for a very interesting map. Um, but yeah, I did want to say hello to any of you who are new to the channel. Uh, recently, I've gotten a huge subscriber bump thanks to, uh, in large part, the Moment series that seems to be just skyrocketing. A lot of the videos uh, kind of come out and then kind of go viral, it seems. Uh, the first couple ones are at over 300k each, uh, and they all seem to be trending that way. So I've gotten almost 20% of my current subscriber base in the last month or so. So it's been crazy. So... Uh, to that effect, I'm sure there's a fair amount of you who've been here for a while, but a fair amount also who are new. So just so you know, I currently do a mix of Total War content and uh, documentary content. So Total War content, uh, the Total War game is a series that does, you know, turn-based campaign level action where you do diplomacy, build up your infrastructure, do tax rates, etc., research technology, and then when two of your armies or navies meet on the campaign, you zoom in and you play on the battlefield. So this is what I'm doing here. It's the battlefield side of Total War. And uh, you can play online, which is what I like to do. So on my channel, you'll be seeing a mix of the online Total War uh, scene, which is fun because it gives us a chance to talk about history. Uh, and then you'll also be seeing a mix of the documentaries. So the Moment series is nice. It's short. It can be done in about two or three weeks time. Uh, so that's cool. So that's what you've seen. And then I have these bigger set piece documentaries, which actually use um, Total War footage in them. Uh, mostly Rome 2, but I've done some Attila and whatnot. So definitely check that out. Um, that being said, also I'll be having some pretty big news uh, in the near future about things that I'm working on and that I'm going to be able to announce, so that's coming along soon. Uh, also, I've got a new Twitter page where you guys can check that out. I have been posting kind of teasers of what I've been working on as well as uh, all kinds of other news. Uh, for instance, I announced that I have uh, an interview coming up that I'll be able to share pretty soon. I was interviewed by uh, Radio New Zealand, which was pretty awesome about YouTube and Total War and making documentaries. So, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of stuff or just other uh, teasers about my documentaries, definitely check me out on Facebook and Twitter. I'll link those below and you can find those linked to my channel. But yeah, what's been going on here is I wanted to seize control of this area. So I'm definitely pouring all my infantry in. I have uh, cheap landwehr, so these are pretty cheap. Or sorry, that's redundant. These are very um, basically they're militia forces, and what means what that means is they are uh, meat bags, not very good at accuracy or morale. You can see they're already wavering, uh, and they're just here to kind of rebuff the enemy, force them to stand still. And against the Semnovsky lifeguard, uh, yeah, I would have lost drastically, but it did buy me time. And what I was able to do is charge in with some Ulans, which are going to be some of your lance uh, bearing cavalry, and they knocked out one of his 17th Jaeger regiments, which is awesome. What I've also brought to the battlefield is a whole bunch of cannons. Uh, so I've brought Halitwitzer, and he's been deployed kind of right through the center. And he is in a position to start to bombard the town and start to clear out positions. Uh, I'm also going to be wheeling up with a 12-pounder and a 6-pounder. 12-pounders have more range and better accuracy. Uh, and I'm going to be moving them into the streets where their accuracy isn't really needed. But I figured if he's going to try and take this town, what I can do is I can set up deploy and get canister shot in these nice positions I really lock down control of the town to sever my opponent's battle lines. I'm also pushing up on the left where he has a fair amount of units. We can take a look at kind of what I've brought. So I have a whole bunch of these fusiliers mixed with militia units and a couple grenzers just to screen them and those are going to be holding my flanks. I also have cavalry as quick action support and those are backed up by six pounders uh, on either flank. On this flank it's a six pounder that's going to be here to fire at the enemy these Pavlov's grenadiers and other forces. I'm going to get a cheeky quick threat on these Russian Jaegers, force them to pull back. And now my battle lines are also going to pull up. His Russian Jaegers can deal with me at a distance, but if I kind of bum rush him, that's one of the things you can do with skirmishers, bum rush them and just get volleys off against them. Let's minimize this. <laughs> Actually, my guy's having not the best of luck. There we go. A couple of volleys are going to be clipping some of them. And yeah, as the... Uh, basically skirmishers will beat you at skirmishing if you allow them to deal with you at range 
uh, they will beat your ass. But if you get up close, tank those first couple shots and close in, your mass volley will do a lot of damage. But you got to make sure that you're going to be uh, able to retreat once reinforcements come in. So that's what I'm doing. Anyways, my cannons have unlimbered here, and now we're going to start to get some early shots. Look like one of the cannons has terrible aim, but the other ones are going to just tear right through these Pavlos. So my cannons are going to be used in such a way to kind of shore up infantry lines and tear through key units. I've been able to seize the town pretty handily, although with his lifeguard foot, these guys are really good regiments, very brutal in melee uh, combat. So in the streets, they're going to do good work. And he's trying to set up alley by alley to clear the way, and I don't have much that can counter this, so I'm mostly pulling back. But what I'm going to try and do is set up with my 12 pounder. You can see I'm going to try and open up a line of fire right up against his Pavlos. So move in artillery and clear that. These Fuziers can kind of hold because they've got a tangential flank. Um, but yeah, this I can't hold out for much longer. So you can see me pulling back. And I'm going to allow my Grenzers to try and keep the enemy at bay. Meanwhile, my 6 pounder has set up here in the position that I was mentioning before. And he is going to be on Overwatch, keeping an eye on the approaching Russian forces. And also my howitzer are going to be firing close support. And I really love how all the shots are rendered and they actually bounce off the ground. Incredible physics. Um, I am taking significant return fire and that is going to be from these Russian, uh, or I guess A battery of Russian uh, 10 powder unicorns. The unicorns are some of the most powerful. Uh, is there another one? No, there's just one. Uh, unicorns are some of the most powerful artillery in the game. Very, very long range. Kind of like experimental howitzer type units. Uh, and you can see them firing. They have ridiculous, um, like I said, range, but also the explosive radius of their shells, just leaving massive craters. And when they hit, they'll take out uh, a fair amount of your units. So he's trying to take out my cannon crew, but uh, the precision of the six pounder is better for taking out infantry that are coming head on. The howitzer like that has a bunch of scattered shots, which are okay against troops that mass up, but me in this position, I've uh, I've spread out. He also has cavalry that are coming to squirt, uh, sorry, not squirt, to skirt around the flanks. So Cossacks moved up, but I did have some of my hidden, um, where are they now? I pulled them back. I had hidden skirmishers. Um, Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. These these aren't militia, these are um, rain skirmishers. So they were actually hidden, and they were right up in the woods. So I let my opponent get close, and then I unleashed on him. So his cavalry is going to have to skirt a little bit further. And then I'm going to slowly push back, and I have the Archduke's Char uh, Charles Legions here, keeping the enemy at bay. In the center, I was just about to get some artillery canister shots, but his Simnovsky uh, lifeguard charged through here. And now they're going to be breaching and clearing the center. I've got some Hungarian Fuziers, but like I told you guys, these guards are super powerful. And they're actually going to start to get into this house and try and retake this position. And he's going to start to put some a threat on this artillery position. Uh, Russian Jaeger is also getting some shots off, so he's starting to do some pretty good damage against me. How it's a really close range shots, though. Back in this position, uh, my opponent did launch some cavalry strikes against this flank. I was able to beat them back by pulling in... Uh, my own general to rally the troops and I took a pretty heavy beating but at the end of the day his cavalry just weren't numerous enough and I was able to bring in my own Chris here who countercharged into his force and so now I'm able to clean up the remainder of these troops on this front pretty handily a lone musketeer and all that was due to me pushing the center and especially having these artillery pieces on either flank to really help break the forces so this artillery piece really did work and now I'm gonna start to sweep and get around the flank. I have my Ulans, which got a lot of kills. They are able to mop up this flank after the Grenadiers were destroyed and really pincer on this forest. You can watch my Curiosiers also getting in on this. I love the gallantry and the close quarters combat of Napoleon. Really hope it's a time period that they re revisit. Yeah, I can pop back and open the map right now so you can see what's going on. So yeah, basically, the center has been kind of lost by my forces. Um, I did. I actually beat him to the to the house. So we're having a little bit of close quarters combat here through the window. It's pretty scary stuff. Uh, and I'm going to charge into his lifeguard foot with my general. He's going to be able to kind of pull out, and my general died. One of the only cavalry forces engaged, and that ended up being okay. Two of them, and that ended up being my general who died. So I was a little bit ballsy and impatient there, uh, and paid the price for it so that was pretty surprising so his lifeguard have that uh, going for them and they are also trying to get after my six pounder my six pounder is going to move around to this position and try and get again a nice position to get canister shots 
Uh, but what's also happened here is I've moved around to outflank his Russian Jaegers. Yeah, he has a force coming in behind, but it's too late to prevent me from uh, cleaning up these Russian Jaegers. So I'm doing pretty good, and I've pulled back a little bit my defenses. I have units hidden in the woods as well to try and deal with these uh, lifeguard Cossacks and Cossacks who could do pretty good damage to me, but so far I've been able to really do a good job of isolating his forces. Now he still does have this howitzer, which is firing away, and I tried to get my Ulans in the mix, but the general came and intercepted me at the last moment. Uh, so he did take half strength casualties. Uh, I probably would have won that in a straight up fight, but my guys were exhausted after having run across the entirety of the battlefield. Um, so yeah, better luck next time, I guess. Chris here is here are pretty tired, but uh, uh, these guys, you want to be very careful with them. They can get very tired, and even when they're active, uh, they can be very slow, and so do not commit them early in the fight. That's one of the biggest takeaways for melee cab in Napoleon. You really have to save them for when the enemy is completely tied down, and I mean, it's just like in real life. Do not charge them at formed enemy ranks. Wait until they're about to break and then swoop them in, and I would even wait a hair's breath till after that they're really good at cleaning up forces units that are wavering um, because they can drop pretty precipitously against an enemy infantry line even if it's not committed um, or sorry even if it is committed uh, even if it's not in square they can still shoot at your guys so be very very careful with your cavalry unfortunately another one of my gun crews comes down to these grenadiers so these guys have a, a mark on my artillery crew i was hoping to get really cheeky and lucky with those canister shots and you can see from the clumps of troops i did get a couple volleys off uh but not enough he just my enemy just charged right on through yeah their numbers are going to be dropping uh the remainder of the enemy is holed up here uh these semnowski lifeguard are in the building fighting with my guys and uh, like I said, the, the Russians have bonuses for melee combat, and they're going to be destroying my forces. And so these lifeguards are easily going to take over the structure. And taking over structures is pretty tough. Shooting from the outside really doesn't get much penetration. You have to get artillery on it, and even that can take a long time. So sometimes it's best to kind of just bum rush it and keep supporting fire. So I'm going to start to do that. Meanwhile, over here, I'm pushing forward with my um, Grenzers and other forces. I'm also charging ahead with my German Fusiliers to pin down his forces and then moving up with more infantry. I've been taking a lot of fire from his artillery but it was well worth it to push up. And my guys here are going to suppress his own in the forest. I'm going to come up with my militia and just start getting pot shots in the rear. He's also going to try and launch an attack through the back but it looks like he forgot to double click an attack move on his Cossacks and he ran right into my hidden uh, line infantry in the woods. So they're going to tear up his Cossack cavalry. No chance of them getting through. And then meanwhile, my German Fusiliers here are going to just shoot up his uh, other lifeguard Cossacks. And just to be safe, I'm going to form up into square. So yeah, a little bit of a micro lapse on my opponent's part. You have to be really careful in Napoleon. And actually going up back to a lot of the older Total War titles, they all have slightly different ways of controlling units. So the default for Napoleon, I believe, is walk. Uh, when you drag units um, as opposed to the double pace auto run that they've done in, in newer Total War titles. So you got to be careful about that. But nonetheless, despite, you know, that tremendous damage he took early on, that charge was still pretty devastating. He's doing a lot of damage to me. Uh, but at this point, I don't really care so much. I've been able to clean up this force, and now I'm pulling up to the final reserve of his units. He's got a last Russian Jaeger trying to fire away at my guys, but uh, I've been able to clobber his units with the Charles uh, Legion force. It's a very strong unit. One of the, I believe you have to, I believe it's DLC actually, uh, although I could be wrong. But yeah, very powerful force. Uh, one of the best that Austria has to offer. And with that, I also kill the general in the back with the rest of my general's bodyguard. And we're going to swarm up through the last Russian force here is going to be this unicorn. I think he's going to try and get some final shots into my general. Let's watch this. Let's see if someone gets decapitated. Nope. Looks like we got into the crew just before they did. Uh, so glorious victory, although the the Jaegers were double thinking, uh, doing a double take, thinking of shooting my guys, and nope, they shatter. So with that, we get a glorious, glorious. capture of the hilltop here. Salamanca province is now ours. We can move on to the cities. Uh, and yeah, that was certainly pretty epic. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, well played to my opponent. It was fun, but I think he let me divide him up a bit too much. Uh, he didn't really have a counter to my artillery pieces. It doesn't seem like they did that much. Um, but they were used in really critical positions. I mean, having an artillery force here, yeah, it got battered, but this six-pounder did a fair amount of damage suppressing his guys on the approach and, most importantly, drawing the attention of his um, 
his unicorns, and even some some musketeers are coming back. Uh, but then, yeah, my other guys, uh, this one in particular, the artillery crew that was positioned here, really helped tie down this force here. And then it, it, I think it made him think uh, carefully about pushing too hard into the city, which allowed me to seize it for most of the battle. Um, and this howitzer is actually still alive. And then on this flank, um, my supporting cavalry was just enough to tip the tide. I think he didn't uh, think carefully enough about his cavalry use here. He had two of them. They kind of charged straight into my lines. Um, and he did pretty good damage, but there was no real follow-up. Had he had those other two cavalry that were circling in the back, what I would have done is waited for that, you know, not launch that assault until he had cavalry all the way in the rear. And then, you know, waited for the perfect enfilade, enfilade excuse me, and surround. And then collapse in on me. He, he really should have done a better job of trying to break apart my forces. Uh, by using the suppressive force of his artillery, by using his lifeguards uh, to hold down the the, the center here. And then after, after that, just use the superior range to slowly chip away at my forces. He also, I believe, had skirmisher advantage in certain areas that wasn't really used that well. Uh, so those would be a couple of my pointers. But now finally, we're going to be circling in on the final Sumnovsky lifeguard. We've uh, asked them to surrender, but they have uh, spat back at us through the windows. And so... If they won't surrender, then we will give them death. But they're tenacious fellows. Uh, not much firepower here. You know, it's one man firing out of a window at a time against my ranks firing into him. And even Howitzer is coming in here. Pretty brutal combat. Uh, but like I said, even with those Howitzers firing, we're only at 8% damage. So um, luckily artillery has basically <laughs> infinite ammo in this game, which allows me to do this. Uh, but otherwise it would not be worth it to ever fire on buildings. They're nigh on indestructible. Oh, it looks like more of my general's bodyguard are going to die here. That was kind of a cool shot though. Fighting in the streets for the town and I love the cannon here. Just abandoned with corpses around it. Like I said, I can't wait till they revisit this time period with updated graphics. There's so much cool stuff. I'm sure that we'll pull off. The smoke and particle effects alone are going to be to die for. And I hope they invest a bit more in Map Friday. In Napoleon, there were some maps that were interesting, but for the most part, it wasn't too great. But yeah, in the end, uh, 2k forces deployed on both sides. Um, <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, he took a fair amount of damage there. Uh, a lot of that is exacerbated by the fact that I had active cavalry in the end of the battle, so this is a little bit inflated by the fact that I could run down entire units, and that's where you get a lot of kills, to be honest. And historically, a lot of the kills in battles were in the pursuit. Uh, if you want to look at the kills, wow, actually surprising, I would have said my artillery did more. Um, so I guess take back that, that value that I kept talking about. I think it was mostly just their you know threats in being and their control of the area but honestly they didn't actually do that much i'm pretty surprised uh, if you want to take a look at how many kills the monsters here were the cuirassiers the 218 again running down a lot of forces grenzers with 158 and 93 on this side the grenzers here were the ones i believe closer to the town, town square picking apart um some elite units moving up and then other regiments moving up as well uh the rest of my unit fuzier is doing pretty good and um, yeah, Ulan's with 179, so really impressive on my cavalry. So that's it from this battle. Hope you guys enjoyed, and definitely check out my um, content on Facebook and Twitter, where I share a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that's going on, give you previews of what's in the works, and then also, speaking about stuff in the works, expect news in the next couple days and weeks about changes to the channel and some cool stuff that's coming along. So yeah, see you in the next one. Peace out.